Shalom, welcome to our daily class from Minachman and Patreon. Shavua Tov, a good week. I hope you all had a meaningful and a powerful uh, Shavuot, the, the hug of receiving the Torah. It's a new, uh, it's like a new year of Torah. It's a new beginning of the learning of Torah, of the receiving this amazing document that's changed reality for billions of people, one way or the other. The last time we spoke, we learned about the idea of God hiding himself and then hiding the fact that he's hidden. And there are people that know that God's hidden, and then there are people that don't even know that he's hidden. And then there are people, of course, the few, the the, the proud and the broad, the strong and the brave that actually live with the presence of Hashem, which uh, you might think is, well, that's the highest thing, that's the wonderful thing, of it, and it is, but it's also uh, can be very difficult because you're never alone. And you're not, a, you're at the luxury of just thinking what you want and doing what you want and going where you want because you're always attached to the idea of what does God want. But when God hides himself, we have to do the work to find out what he wants. And when God hides his hiddenness, then we don't even know that he's hidden. <laughs> and this is the, probably the most devastating situation a human being can be in because then he doesn't even have a second thought about what he's doing in life. <clears throat> of course, there are other states of, of moral law that can uh, impose themselves upon a person's thinking and feeling and actions. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a different thing when you have a, a relationship with a living being that has an interest in your life and what you do and what you don't do and where you go and what you do when you go and the relationships you have. See, so everything has meaning in that relationship. And as they used to say, uh, oh, back in the New Age days, uh, well, it's good enough just to be good because it's good to be good. And I was like, eh, it sounds kind of full of good, <laughs> but I'm not sure it holds, it holds us through the difficult times. So the Rebbe begins this paragraph, we are in the third long, second long paragraph, the first words are Aval be'emet, afidu b'chol ha'estorot, afidu astorah shebetoch astorah then in all the hiddenness, even when the hiddenness is hidden v'v'raish kam shama el bilbash Hashem b'rach, certainly God is enclosed there as well ki v'v'rayin shum davar shelo yeh bo chiyut Hashem b'rach because there's nothing without God's life force because without God's life force, nothing could exist. In all things, in all actions, deeds, and even in all thoughts, good and bad. Listen. He's there, hidden, enclosed, concealed, even in bad thoughts. How is that possible? Because God is much deeper than human thought. He's way further down the rabbit hole, if you will, if you will choose that metaphor. Even when a person does a sin, you know, that famous classical idea, it's against God's will. With all of this, God's life force is still there in the person going against his will. So you see the responsibility of having a soul, the responsibility that you have being a live, sentient being in this world, that you're receiving life from the source of life, and you can do whatever you want with it. Even if God is in a great hiddenness, within the hiddenness, within the evil thoughts and deeds of people, and the Torah is the life force of all things, because it is the condensation and the blueprint and the constriction of the infinite into the finite, into the letters, which then expand into ideas and expand into desire and become actions. Even in the thoughts, speech, and action of a sin, 
Yes, Sham Gam came hit Labshut Torah. You can still find the enclosement of the Torah. So how does that look? The Torah says don't use God's name in vain. And people curse all the time with his name. Well, first of all, they, they couldn't even utter a word without God's life force. They couldn't uh, breathe a breath or beat a pulse of their heart without the life force. And then a person gets upset and he curses, God forbid. The words that he chooses are his free choice, but he's dragging the life force of God into the choice. And that's like dragging the princess into the dungeon, a filthy dungeon. Ah, seems some good over. Nevertheless, he's in a, a deep, deep hiddenness and contraction which is like these concepts we learned already, the hidden and the hidden within the hidden key. And we know this other item of the rabbis that say a person does a sin. He does it the second time. It's as if he starts to think that it's okay. It's okay, you know, this is who I am, this is what I do. And our sages talked about this in the second Yoma, this is what you do. You take the living word of God and you turn it into the opposite. Not any of you, of course, but, you know, people that sin on purpose, they don't understand what they're doing. They're taking the life force of the life of life and they're turning it inside out and making it the source of evil. Well, it seems to be the Torah and they take the words of the Torah and they twist the letters and exchange them for different letters. Reverses of the letters that turn a bad deed into a, a good deed when it's not in their mind. And I say, me is heter, and they suddenly arrive at a permissible action that's clearly written in the Torah that it's not. And this is what Yeshaya, the great prophet, said, Woe to those who say, Ah, oh, good is evil, and evil is good. And we find that even in the life force of Averot, God is there. Which are the letters of the Torah. It's so hidden that we don't even know it's there. You know, there, there are wise, holy, spiritual people that can know your thoughts before you even know them. They can receive the essence of who you are before you even know your own essence. Because that's, we're all in this living tree, this network of life force, of holiness, and it flows through each person at their place on the network. And it, can, it who we are can be hidden from us and they can still know it. Dainu, and that is to say that because of the sin, we took the, the sin takes the letters of the Torah and reverses them. And it makes a forbidden thing permissible. As he said, a person did the Averah, did it again the second time. He's already making himself it permissible. And this is the first hiddenness. Now, at that level, you still know that God is around. You just don't see Him, you don't feel Him, you don't hear Him. But you still have the knowledge. When God is hidden on the first level, at this level we've been talking about, then He already looks at the as something different because He's changing the letters. And that's what we're doing with the life force. We're taking the, the the force that turns everything green, everything beautiful, and makes everything black and ugly. And there at the first level, it's very hard to find Hashem. Because already the forbidden thing is now permissible. But nevertheless, it's still possible to dig and to work hard and to find God in those dark places 
Because he knows he still knows that there's a God because he knows there's a good and evil. So his consciousness is still built on that paradigm of good and evil. And as long as you know that something is, uh, well, it's good or evil, you're still in the game, or at least in the stadium. Okay. Even the God is hidden from him. And also that he's already made the forbidden thing permissible. In calls then, nevertheless, with all this, he could still straighten his heart and sit down with himself and say, look, this is not right. And he <coughs> until he gets and he sees, well, look what I've done. I've done this thing, and now I've made it legal. I made it okay, and it was never okay before, and suddenly it's okay now. That's a, a form of tshuva. And he prays, and he digs, and he thinks, and and he feels where he's at, and he works until he's out of there. And then he knows the truth. Because nevertheless, he knows that everything that he's done is he's made it into something permissible. And even if I know that I've turned the, the forbidden permissible, as long as I know that I've done that, then I know that there is a, a distinction between good and evil. And that means that there has to be a God. We should know she is or. There's a level of the hiddenness within the hiddenness. That the hiddenness is hidden, that he doesn't even know that it's hidden anymore. He doesn't even think or know that God is hidden from him. He doesn't even know that he's made something forbidden permissible. He just says, you know, <laughs> like the old joke, the only thing that's forbidden in, in Sodom and Amorah is the idea that say that something's forbidden. And there's probably some places like that today, I imagine, where, you know, you can't even say that something's wrong because someone will say, no, 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 it's free choice. I can do whatever I want. It's a free country. Rock, call it the domot lo... The Mishur Gamur. Rather, a person like this has reached the level that even all the evil things look all the same. Like a straight plane, like a flat piece of land that you don't question the up and the down, the good and the evil. If this person, and after a person does an Avera, does it again, and he does more sins, Soon he will lose the the consciousness that what he's done is wrong. And it'll all be right, and it'll all be fine, and there is no sin at all. And it's all just one thing. No good or evil, no God. It's not a happy place. And it's not an easy place to get out of because you don't even know that you need to get out of anywhere. And he has no idea of the little particulars of doing sins. And everything seems straight in the way it's supposed to be. This is the hiddenness within the hiddenness. He doesn't feel anything's wrong. The Atzman is steret, and the hiddenness of God is hidden from him, and so he can do whatever he wants, and he can hurt other people's feelings, and that's okay because, you know, they were involved. They knew what we were doing. We told you we're going to rob a bank. Now we robbed the bank, and then we got caught. Well, you knew. Why do you blame me? Blame yourself. You agreed to go along. And that is, that's how it is with every sin, especially with other people involved. However, even there, the link, the letters of the Torah are enclosed. Because without Hashem, the life of life, there is no power in anything. 
Through the abundance of sins, he pecked the Relokim Chaim Legamre. But this power of God is now completely can be reversed and turned inside out. And he take because he you see this, he takes the wisdom of the Torah and turns it into foolishness. And and this is why a lot of people will look at religious people and say, ah, they're just they bought the goods. You know, they're just uh, you know, innocent, fine people, but you know, they're kind of dumb and they just bought the goods. And I remember people thinking that. Uh, you know, like, Avram, what happened to you? Suddenly you became religious? Well, it's it's 30 years later. But I could see in some people's eyes, you see that they're thinking that, you know, this person really doesn't know what's going on. They believe in God. There is no God. I know people like that. And those kind of people, they, should, they don't even know that there's something that's called forbidden. He doesn't know even for, at all. And so everything becomes permissible. And folks, this type of level is very toxic if you still have a consciousness of good and evil. Because these kinds of people, they're not consciously toxic. They just are. Because they don't call, you know, a thing by its name. They don't have the consciousness of good and evil even anymore. And this is the world we live in. And this is a hiddenness within the hiddenness. Therefore, we need to reveal the, hidden, the hiddenness itself. We have to take the idea that God is hidden and then that He hides. And we have to apply that consciousness to all the places. Where good is evil and evil is good. And he tells us how briefly this is by taking the length of days, wisdom and experience that's accumulated over time and drawing it into kingship. Kingship is the power of revealing, the power of giving over, of sharing. That's what the kings do. And we draw that idea of the length of days into the kingship, then you begin to reveal that there is something still within the hiddenness at a deeper level. The hidden with the hidden can now be revealed. And that life force, you know, I'll tell you like this. It's, it's really quite simple. You know, if a person goes to a bar... And he wants to fall in love. It's a good thing to want to fall in love, right? No one would argue. No, but where did he go to choose to fall in love? A place that, well, people might not be so dedicated to falling in love. They might be dedicated to other things. So he's taken the life force and he's hidden it. And then he's gone to a place that where it's hidden. And it's hidden, you know, deep inside. So, And to the point where I think that I'm going after love, but I'm really not. Because you're in the wrong place for love. Remember that old country music song? <laughs> Looking for love in all the wrong places. Well, that's what it is. Because we don't know that, that there is good and there is evil. And we know that there is a God and there is the absence of life. And that love is part of life. So if we want to go to life, we have to love, we have to go for it from the source of life. And not from a place where, you know, it smells kind of rotty in the morning. Because that's not life. So folks, I, I bless you all to find that love, to find the hiddenness and the hiddenness inside the hiddenness. And to know that God is with you in all your thoughts. And we just have to separate the good from the evil. We'll continue this uh, series uh, tomorrow on where, <clears throat> on our Patreon site and uh, look for you on all the other platforms and it should be a good week and uh, we should uh, renew and strengthen ourselves in the learning of Torah, the keeping of the mitzvot and doing good deeds because these holidays uh, do give us a light to start again. And this shows we take that light and do the right thing with it and God is happy, very happy. Have a great day.